Solve by factoring. We have 2x cubed plus x squared equals 13x minus 6. Now remember we had a three-step process to solve by factoring. Step 1 was to set one side of the equal sign to 0. Step 2 was to factor. And step 3 was to solve for the values of x that set each factor to 0. So in this case, let's start with step 1. We'll move uh, everything from the right-hand side to the left-hand side by subtracting 13x and adding 6 to both sides. And that'll leave us with 2x cubed plus x squared minus 13x plus 6 equals 0. Now I'm going to call this cubic polynomial p of x, and we're searching for the values of x that set p of x to 0. Okay, so this cubic isn't factorable by grouping, which means we're going to have to apply the factor theorem. And remember, we had a four-step process to apply the factor theorem to factor a polynomial. So in step one of that process, we try to find a root of the polynomial and its corresponding factor. Now remember, when we're guessing at potential roots, the potential roots should have numerators that are factors of the constant term. So the constant term is 6, it has factors plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 6. And the potential roots should have denominators that are factors of the leading coefficient, which is 2, and has factors plus or minus 1, and plus or minus 2. Okay, uh, so how about we start by guessing and checking integer potential roots. So let's start with 1 and negative 1, which comes from a numerator of plus or minus 1 and a denominator of plus or minus 1. So this is step 1 of our four-step process to apply the factor theorem. Let's evaluate p of positive 1. Um, actually, by inspection, I can tell you we'll have 2 plus 1 plus 6, which is 9, minus 3, which is negative 4. So this will not be equal to 0. Um, next, we'll evaluate p of negative 1. Very similar analysis will tell us that negative 1 is not a root. Um, then we'll evaluate the next integer potential root, which will be uh, positive 2. That'll come from positive 2 over positive 1, or negative 2 over negative 1. So p of positive 2 is going to be 2 times 2 cubed. So we'll substitute 2 in for all the x's, plus 2 squared minus 13 times 2 plus 6. So 2 times 2 cubed is 2 times 8, which is 16. Then we have plus 2 squared, which is 4, minus 13 times 2, which is 26, plus 6. Now 16 plus 4 is 20, plus 6 is 26, minus 26 is 0. So 2 is a root. x equals 2 is a root. And x minus 2, therefore, is a factor. Okay, um, so we've actually already found one solution to our equation. So if we were to plug 2 in for all the x's here, we would get 0. So x equals 2 is one solution, um, but we have to continue with our factoring process to find the rest of the solutions. Okay, so in step 2 of our four-step process to apply the factor theorem, we divide our polynomial, p of x, by the factor we just found, x minus 2. I'll do that synthetically. So bringing down the coefficients of the polynomial, we have 2, 1, negative 13, and 6. So we'll have 2, 1, negative 13, and 6. And the number that goes outside of the synthetic division sign is the a value from our divisor of the form x minus a. So it's going to be positive 2, not negative 2, since our divisor is in the x minus a form. Okay, now we drop down the first coefficient like so. Then we multiply this number outside with the number underneath. 2 times 2 gives us 4. Then we add these numbers vertically, not subtract, as is the case in long division. So we'll have 1 plus 4, which is 5. 2 times 5 gives us 10. Negative 13 plus 10 gives us negative 3. And 2 times negative 3 gives us negative 6. 6 plus negative 6 gives us 0. So we have a remainder of 0, which we would expect, since we know x minus 2 is a factor of our polynomial. Then, interpreting our result, we have a constant term of negative 3, an x term coefficient of 5, and an x squared term coefficient of 2. So our quotient, q of x, 
is 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. And we can rewrite our original dividend polynomial as the product of this quotient and the factor we just found, like so. Okay, now on to step three, which is to repeat this process of finding a root and then dividing by the corresponding factor until uh, we end up with a quotient that is quadratic. In this case, our quotient is already quadratic, so I'm just going to rewrite it here. 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. So step three isn't necessary. We don't have to repeat steps one and two. Um, we can actually move right to factoring this quadratic. So this quadratic is a messy trinomial, which means that we can't apply the fast factoring method. So we need to know the product of the leading coefficient and the constant term, which is negative 6. And now we're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add to positive 5, the coefficient on the x term. Those two numbers are 6 and negative 1. So we'll split the x term into 6x and minus x, leaving us with 2x squared plus 6x minus x minus 3. And now we factor by grouping. So from the pair of terms on the left, we can pull 2x, leaving us with x plus 3. And from the pair on the right, we can pull negative 1, again, leaving us with x plus 3. Now these brackets match, which is a sign that we're on the right track. Now we can write our fully factored expression as the product of the sum of these coefficients, so 2x minus 1, times the expression in the matching brackets, x plus 3. OK, so that is our factored quadratic. We're going to write it in factored form over here. So we'll have 2x minus 1 times x plus 3 instead of this quadratic trinomial. Don't forget, we're still multiplying by x minus 2. And now we can determine the potential roots due to, or not potential roots, the actual roots due to these two factors. We already know the root due to this factor is x equals 2, um, and that's from up here. Okay, so the factor of 2x minus 1, we'll set that equal to 0 to solve for the value of x that sets it to 0. Then we add 1 to both sides, leaving us with 2x equals 1 and then divide both sides by 2 to leave us with x equals 1 half. Now the factor of x plus 3, we'll set that to 0, and subtract 3 from both sides to find the value of x that sets the factor to 0, and we're left with x equals negative 3. So these are our three solutions to this equation. We have x equals a half, x equals negative 3, and x equals 2. Okay, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching.